Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Kuru Mania in the three-minute pool on ICC. Let's open with d4 against Grandmaster Kuru Mania, and I'll play knight f3, move two, maybe a tore, bishop g5, knight bd2. Keep it simple in a three-minute game. This will be another three-minute session. Let's advance e4 if allowed. I suspect they'll probably play a setup with d6, and maybe, hmm, maybe bishop c4, although that gives the possibility for knight takes e4. So let's put the bishop on d3 instead. I'm just worried about that center fork trick that could occur. Let's take this one. I think going for this pawn structure is all right out of this opening. I've seen some players do this before. So let's play rookie one, possibly with an eye towards playing e5 at a later date. If black wants to give me the bishop pair, I am more than happy to oblige them. And happy weekend to everyone out there. It's about 9 o'clock p.m. on a Friday. Pretty lazy Friday for me. I had an invitation to go out with some friends, but I declined. I just felt like staying in. No particular reason, just wanted to recharge my batteries. Uh, hmm, so there's this pin going on. I think I'll escape that with queen e2. I was considering playing e5, but this move looks all right, just keeping e5 in reserve. And they're angling for this square. They want that square. I think this move might be decent. Just simply threatening to eliminate the knight and thereby take the pawn. So doesn't that hang a pawn? Or are they going to go knight d4? Should I take... I'm going to do this anyways. I think knight d4 can be dealt with. So let's do this now. Yeah, queen here. Maybe queen takes b5 will be the answer. We'll see. Oh, they could also play bishop takes e5, couldn't they? That move I underestimated. Okay, I'm going to go here simply to ensure that we don't lose that bishop. I have some loose pieces. My bishop out on g5 is kind of floating. It does threaten to take on e7. Not happy with the queen-bishop arrangement right now. If this queen was not on b6, there might be some b5 issues. Hence, like, maybe queen a5 is playable for black here. Trying to go b5. He's going to back it up. Okay, I'm thinking c3 is the way to treat this. Yeah, try to gain some scope for our bishop to come back later. He might play knight to e6, attacking my bishop. Let's go here. Hitting the rook. And he couldn't go to e8, so he kind of has to play this way. Let's keep the bishop pair. I think it's useful to do so. He might decide to play a6 and go for b5. So let's withdraw this for now. Guard the d3 square. So after some adventures from both sides, we have the bishop pair in a, maybe a sleepy position. Let's just trade. The clock is not a huge factor. But every time I, I say that, I feel like it becomes a factor. So... <laughs> So bear that in mind. Maybe rook d5. Interesting move. Looking to induce a trade. Hmm. Might be worth a shot. Or just g3. Let's play g3 and just kind of build up. Idea push f4 at some stage. And he wants bishop d6. Or bishop takes g3 maybe. Hmm. Well, I could trade. Or play f4. Rook d5. Mm. I'm going to go rook d5. Let's see what he does about that. There's this possibility of a sack on g3, but I don't think it works. Like, if he does it now, rook takes d7 is convincing. And if he takes on d5, then I can take with the pawn and gain a tempo on that knight, which might have to go to a bad square. So it seems like now is the time to play this semi-disruptive move. Let's go here. Threatening e5. So he backs off. Makes sense. Still can't go e5 yet. Okay, let's just push. Looking for e5 or maybe f5 later. Opening up my king, maybe it'll find a home on g2 where it would guard the g3 pawn. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this. We'll keep e5 in reserve. I don't think it quite works yet anyways, so I might as well hold off on it for a move. So if I take d8, he's going to take e3, he's telling me. Okay, let's take here. So if knight takes, I have queen d4, which is important. Okay, let's, let's take with the queen. Kind of unsure which way to take is the problem. Okay, let's go e5, open the bishop. I have a feeling this position is not better for me, though. Let's go here. h1 is always a square he can invade on, but to do that, he'd, he'd leave this knight hanging, so 
Let's just play this way for now. Maybe g4 was better there. I'm not sure. The position seems kind of level right now. I'm not sure he can justify playing for a win. Let's do this. Trying to go bishop f3. Ah, knight d3. I just blundered that. Ugh. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad now. He can just take that pawn. Okay, well, let's take that first. And then we're going to go bishop e2. I'm very much on the defensive now, though. I don't like it. This position's probably okay, though. He must have had better than b4 there a moment ago. Okay, take that. I don't know what that was about. The wheels are coming off for him. Let's take here. Trapping his knight as well. Let's do that. I'm trying to force a swap. He can come into d3. He's going to keep the pieces on the board. We're going to avoid a fork if possible. Let's try to trap his queen a little bit. And now he can't really move. If I got to play a move though fast. Ooh, and we won that game. Ooh, well, allowing knight d3 check was a poor decision on my part. I just missed that he could do that. I took my, my eye off the ball for a split second. And bad things happen when you lose your focus in a chess game. Especially against a grandmaster with not a lot of time on your clock. So right here, key moment, he played a5. So black looks to be a little bit better here because I have trouble finding something useful to do. Maybe I should move my king like king g1. I faced this indecision right here when he checked me on c6, whether to go to f2 or h2. And I went towards the center, but undeniably when I play king f2, I leave h1 available for him to invade with, uh, with his queen at a later date. He can't do it right away. I mean, he could think about it, actually. He could probably do it. Queen h1, queen takes c5, queen h2, check. He's going to pick up my bishop. But he was probably holding off to do it at a stronger time. And I must be in big trouble right here. B4, probably not correct. If he would have massaged this position a bit more, I think he was probably going to win this game, especially with the time edge. Okay, well, let's get back in the pool. This Torre against knight f6 and g6 has become popular in the last couple years. I notice even very elite players dabbling with this from the white side, especially at rapid time controls. When they had the world blitz and rapid a couple months ago, a few months ago now, I think, guess it was October or November, I noticed a lot of players playing like this from the white side. And I think in this game, I got a good position. I had the two bishops. Maybe I could have done better after knight e5. Knight d4 was a nice shot by black forking my queen and my bishop. Things got messy thereafter. Okay, Macron 2, who is this? Leonard Kritz. Hmm, okay. Let's play a Scanny against him. Can't recall if I faced Leonard Kritz before in Blitz. I probably have. We'll hit him with a queen d8. See what he fires back with. Bishop c4, a flexible move. And now if they play knight f3, white can try to hold off on the d4 push. Yeah, and let's go e6 just to preempt any knight e5 business. Hmm, I kind of want to fight back with c5, but I'm going to play the standard move a6 and look to go b5 hereafter. Um, you can even play a6 on move number uh, 5 instead of e6 if you're feeling like it. As analyzed on Chessable. Okay, let's play bishop e7. He might do a setup with castling queenside and posting the knight up on e5. He has played a4 though, so I think if he castles queenside, that will always entail more risk. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him just go short and try to play like rook d1, knight e5, that sort of thing. He's going to tempt me with taking on g2, but probably in view of this possibility on f7, it's not a good idea. So let's just do this. Protecting f7 nicely, and queen takes d4 is still a threat, or bishop takes g2. I just didn't want to do it when my king was in the center. I want the ability to play rook takes f7, and he's going to challenge me on that. Okay. Well, this actually also reminds me of a line I had in Chessable. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Seems weird to do, but I'm going to play this way. And then after he takes e6, I'm going to hide my king on e8. And he'll have two pawns for the piece, but I wonder if my defensive resources will be sufficient there. I can try to move my queen and hide my king on d8. 
It's very important that I keep the position relatively closed here after. I don't want it opening it up uh, hugely in white's favor. And I can't castle anymore, so there'll be no question about me playing my king over to c8, at least not uh, manually. Okay, let's go king here. He might want to pester my queen a little bit, like maybe play g3 and bishop f4. I would think about that if I were white. He's going to go for a setup with d5. These are the lengths I go to for material, guys. <laughs> you know? He's just going to try to kill me in the center. I think I got to develop, so I'm going to play this move. Yeah, clear sign he wants bishop f4. He wants it bad. Queen b4, maybe? Or h6 first, perhaps. h6 and then queen b4. It's a lot to calculate. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give him what he wants with bishop f4 and then bring the queen in here and see if we can hold the position. If bishop takes d7, probably knight takes d7. I guess he could play bishop takes c7, king takes c7, queen takes e 7 then, but I would probably welcome that simplification. The queens would come off the board. Clearance sacrifice d6. Ooh, that, that might be a good move, d6. But it's not clear. It's not clear at all. Okay, so I got to take with the knight. Can he go rook d4 after this? Nah. Ooh, actually he might be able to. That's a nice move. So if queen takes d4, queen takes e7, king c8, he has queen e8 at the end of the line. Wow, that's a nice one. Ah, I missed that. I mean, I was definitely playing with fire the way I played that. <laughs> so I'm not surprised that there's a knockout here. That's a cool checkmate. And if I go queen c5, he has rook c4 anyways, which wins. So I can't do much. Yeah, I'm just going to let him checkmate me because there's there was no escape there whatsoever. So, yeah, queen e8, nice move. Yeah, checkmate. Well, I got a little bold there with allowing knight takes f7 and then taking with my king especially. I think I should have taken with the rook and then after queen takes e6 played just queen f8, something like that. He could always take f7 and he'd have uh, a rook plus two pawns against two minor pieces. So, yeah, king takes f7 was pretty bold. And I would usually turn on my engine and have a look at it, but I, I think i got to reload my engine. I've been meaning to do this for the last couple sessions, but I moved some files around and suddenly my engine like doesn't work anymore on ICC. So, But yes, nicely played by him with this queen e8 checkmate idea. And rook d4 was the, the move I missed. My... My sense of danger might have let me down a little bit here, though. H6 is really asking for it, allowing bishop f4, and I'm playing with fire, no doubt. Probably I'm just busted here. So instead of h6, what else could I do? Hmm. Yeah, white's fully coordinated. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if white just had a good position here, a winning attack, maybe. So this king walk, king takes f7, bishop takes e6, king e8. Maybe asking too much of my position. <laughs> it was fun to see how white plays that, though. And like I said right here, after knight f3, you can also play a6 if you want, trying to go b5. Uh, because if a6, d4, that would transpose directly to another line of the queen d8 Scandinavian. So, okay, let's get back in the action. El Rodor. Let's play b3 again. I've been dabbling in this move from the white side. Bishop b2. All right, we get another chance to play this line. Let's see if I can redeem myself. I got crushed in a game that I did on stream recently, and I remember in that game when my opponent pushed h5, I responded with h4, and in retrospect, that was a mistake. So he's probably going to try to maneuver his knight around. Yeah, so like this move right here, this is a little tricky to deal with. I think I'm going to play knight f3, trying to discourage that... Uh, h4 move he might go bishop e7 and then h4 later but we'll take that risk at least for now okay so let's go here just fighting for control of e4 and maybe queen c2 or queen d3 let's play queen d3 and he castles i feel better about castling now so i'm trying to use my structure to my advantage and i might go b4 b5 and try to press on the queen side later Right now, I'm just playing to control e4 and unleashing my bishop. Hmm. 
He might go d5 and try to play knight e4 thereafter. I can play d5 myself. Might be good timing on this move. I'm going to do it. So if he takes, I get to take with a, a piece, probably the knight. And I'm hoping that I come out ahead structurally. Looks like it works, so let's do it. He's got this isolated d-pawn now. I don't think I run into any disasters on e3. It's covered a couple times. Probably rook e1 is a smart move now. Just reinforcing. Hmm. Let's go here. I can always play knight f1 if necessary. If I get really scared. Okay, bishop c6 looks good. Forcing his rook away. I want to play knight b1, c3, d5. But I also don't want to allow him into the e4 square so easily. So, hmm. How can I play this? Well, no, I think that's all right. I'm going to do it. Even though it allows this active knight e4 move. I'm thinking maybe even take. But then he can straighten out his pawns. I'm not sure how I'll respond to knight e4. He doesn't play it. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to take this way. Definitely not f takes g3 when e3 would become weak. So he's going to send his queen over here and try for queen h5 from the looks of it. Or maybe knight e5 is his idea. Yeah, probably knight e5. Hmm. So knight e2, queen g5, knight f4 kind of holds things together. But I don't want to go fully on the defensive. I feel like I shouldn't have to. Well, actually, this might be a decent maneuver. Let's do it. So here with tempo on the queen, and then go here, just covering the h5 square. I got to watch out for sacrifices on e3 or f2, let's say. If knight e5, I have queen d5, so that's fine in that department, holding the bishop. It's weird to have the bishop in front of the queen, though, this far into black's position. Just an odd position in general <laughs> we have right here. Okay, I'm going to go here. So if bishop takes, I can take with the e-pawn or the g-pawn, actually. I oh, know I'd have to take with the e-pawn. If I took with the g-pawn, he has knight takes c6, and I'd be unable to play queen takes c6. So let's pre-move this capture. If g5, I guess knight d3, probably. Looking to trade. He does take that way, okay. All right, so we've got a slightly better structure still. He also can't use the e8 square. He might be dropping the d-pawn. Not sure about that last decision by him. He's going to go for it with g5. I think rook d4 is sensible now. Could also just take on d6 or take g5. If I take g5, he's going f4, but do I really care? Nah. Let's do this. Yeah, okay, so he wants f4 pretty bad. I can try to stop that with rook d5. And given that he can't really move, I think I'm going to do that. Let's go here. Just controlling this f4 square. As long as rook e8 is not playable, I think we can afford to play like this. Maybe even rook f4, queen d5, and attack f5. Might be the best way of handling it. Hmm. Okay, let's go over here, just so we can trade if rook h8. I don't want him easily lining up. Okay, let's go here. So if f4, I have queen d4 check. What's the point of that move? He has some potential suffering in store. Still. Like, let's go here now. Bring this up, attack this pawn. Yeah, and he's now he can't hold everything. I guess, yeah, king g6 even runs into rook takes d6. Oh, no! Blindsided. <laughs> Oh, queen h1. Oh, I got completely blindsided. Ouch. Yeah, so if king g2, queen h1 mate. That came out of left field. That's also been happening lately. I hate to bring up the game against medieval, but that happened there too. Mm. Yeah, and I can't blo block on either d1 or c1. I would just lose in that case. One move blunder. Rook d5. Yeah. <laughs> okay well i played well positionally in the middle game i think if i were black i would have played knight e4 instead of h4 he did his level best to get through on the king side but 
Structurally, white is essentially winning here. I just need to uh, dampen his counterplay and start picking off the pawns, but I didn't manage to do that. Hmm. So what's the best move after rook h6? If I can't go rook d1, maybe I need some prophylaxis like king g2, but then he gets in queen g6 looking for queen h5. It's suddenly not entirely clear. But this is a good example of how to give away the game in one move. Just didn't even look at queen a1. Oh well, okay. Let's get back in the action. So I'm one and two on the session. I keep getting random challenges from people who are pretty low rated too. Weird. Okay, let's take a look at a game while we wait. Oh, we get Macron 2 again. I don't think I'm going to play the Scandi this game. I'm going to do something different this time around. Let's play Let's play a Sicilian. I don't know what Crits plays against the Sicilian. So we'll get an open Sicilian. Knight takes d4 coming. Entertaining game so far. Yeah, and he plays the Richter Rouser. I'll play this line with bishop d7 that I play only very occasionally these days. But I've studied it a little bit. And knight b3, intriguing. Maybe f5. How about that? Just trying to get the bishop to g7, kind of in the style of a Sveshnikov, where you sometimes uh, take on doubled f pawns and then try to push f5 to liberate this bishop when it goes to this diagonal. He's going to take, all right, let's take back. Hmm, maybe bishop g6 or just bishop g7. Let's take and play bishop g7. We'll keep it real simple. Probably good to do after two consecutive losses. Just try to play a simple position, right the ship a little bit. And he wants to attack me on the queen side, it seems, or on the king side, rather, if I commit my king to that wing. It's a good plan. Uh, maybe rook c8. Let's see if we can eye this knight on c3 a little bit. I'm curious what he'll do, because I have a strong bishop on the long diagonal. If I could go knight b4, that would be awesome, but probably for the moment it's not going to work. I think I got a castle now, so I'm going to do it. No use keeping my king in the center any further with his rook on the e-file and also his pressure on d6. He was actually threatening queen takes d6 there. So knight d5. I want to get at c2. Can I play just e6, force him back, and then knight b4? I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's do it. He might have to go back to c3, which would be pretty gross if he did. Gross for him, that is. Yeah, but now knight b4, what are you going to do? Queen takes d6, I take c2. Either way, nah, I don't know. Hmm. I also have bishop h6 here. But that opens my, my king, queen g3 check. Oh no, this has got to be good. If queen takes d6, rook takes c2, king b1, I have rook takes b2. It took a second to see rook takes b2 for some reason. So I was looking at, instead of rook takes c2, knight takes c2. I don't know what I was thinking there, but... Yeah, if I can play rook takes c2 and rook takes b2, that's actually forced mate virtually coming up. Hmm. Well, all IMs and GMs so far this session. Okay, so I can win the queen. Is there anything better? Nah, let's just play to win the queen. Be practical. I also even have, like, bishop takes b2 at the end or queen f6. Queen f6 nearly wins material. He'd have to play knight d3. Let's do queen f6, yeah. Just force him to retreat. Move his knight back. I'll probably take the open file here. Hmm. Let's play king h8. Just tuck the king away for later. He might play rook e3 and try to play actively on the uh, third rank. He's going to play for f4 instead. So I like my bishop and my queen kind of complement each other, complementing each other on uh, similar diagonals. Let's play b6, maybe with an eye towards playing a5. I could have played a5 on the next move, actually. I didn't have to play b6. But I feel like I have great control here, so that's why I'm playing the position a little more slow. Yeah, my queen was defending the pawn, so that wasn't necessary. Hmm. Rook takes c1 does not work, so let's just keep pressing. 
a3 becomes a big problem for him. Probably he needs to play a3 himself. He does. Let's play rook c4, just increase the pressure, maybe an eventual rook d4. Just milking our material advantage and our grip on the position as well. And I think with rook d4 coming, this starts to look pretty bad for him. Let's play bishop d4, just attacking that rook. If rook f3, maybe queen e4, I'm thinking. Further pester him. Okay, b5. Can play that move penalty free, so it might as well. And he's having to spend a lot of time as well. Uh, can I attack a3 somehow? I'm going to bring this back. I don't think uh, king to a1 greatly helps him. Let's bring this over. B4 is almost crushing here. B4, knight takes, knight takes, A3 at the very end. I actually really like the look of that. I'm going to do it. It might be unnecessary, but I can't resist. It looks really good. So we're just going to force through A3 coming up and get at B2. And he might have to give up a lot of material even to avoid just losing. Okay, we can come here now. If king b1, I have a2 check. It's probably the smoothest way to win. Uh, amazingly, hmm. Amazingly, he has a counter to that. So I'm just going to go for the material now. He's got a pass b pawn. That's a little troubling. Ugh. Yeah, his b pawn now is becoming a pest. Let's give a check here. Let's check again. Okay, I'm going to bring my queen back now. Next move. Let's bring our king up. Now he's going to try to maneuver his knight in somehow, but it's hard to get his knight completely involved, isn't it? Okay, let's check here. Let's check again. And I'll bring our king back. This should still be winning, but, you know, both sides are going to have to be careful, obviously. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Terrible technique. I will take it. <laughs> Bad technique in a winning position again. You know, it was crazy right here. So I was going to play a2 check. Idea king takes a2, queen takes c1. But then I saw that he could actually play rook to c2 at that stage. That's like, I mean, honestly, I think sheer luck that that's actually present for him. Because this sacrifice... Even though I'm giving some material, it opens the attack on b2. It just looked decisive. But yeah, after queen here, I was going to do that. King takes a2, and then here. But he has this move. And then he's going to get rook c8 check in, and I'll have to give up my bishop. So actually looking at this now, I have this move in reply. And if he checks bishop f8, take king here, and both of his rooks are hanging, and he can't coordinate them. So that was probably still winning, unless he has some weird thing like not checking here and moving his rook, but I doubt it. Now nah, I can play queen a6 or move my bishop. Yeah, so that was that was decisive. But uh, after after I play b takes a2, or a takes b2 rather, and he takes back, like suddenly white has a protected pass b pawn and a rook plus knight. And I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And then at the very end, I just blundered, didn't I? Well, he played knight c5, which is a ridiculous move, and I didn't even take his knight. <laughs> I, was, I think I pre-moved knight d5. Okay, well, we're 1-1 one one against Macron, and 2-2 two and two on the knight. Good games at 9.30 p.m. at night. This is a pretty provocative line, this whole bishop d7 idea. Because the usual move is e6, so that after bishop takes f6, you can take with a queen. So when I play bishop d7, his response bishop takes f6 is a principled reply. It doubles up my pawns, but I do have the bishop pair in kind of a, a big center. Uh, like Bafanik might like this center. And I decided to play f5. This did lead to the opening of some lines. In retrospect, I'm sure he would not have played knight d5, allowing e6 followed by knight b4. Because black is surely just crushing here. Yeah, I win the queen and... Should have been smooth sailing. 
But I like to give this line an outing every once in a while. Bishop d7. I think I've seen Kristoff play this line too before in a video or two. Although I think he plays it in slightly different form. The so-called Kuprechik variation, I think, is what he does. Which I believe is actually, if I'm not mistaken, the way he plays it is right here, instead of knight c6, the classical Sicilian, he plays bishop d7 at this juncture. Food for thought. Oh, one thing I wanted to ch take a look at here tonight is the, the best list. Okay, we're playing critter now. Hmm, what to do? I want to play something different. Something outside the box. Well, let's play f4. Let's have a game with the bird. I played this the other day in my uh, bullet arena on Lee Chess. And kind of got me thinking, like, maybe it's not bad to mix up my openings once in a while. <laughs> so we're playing like a Leningrad Dutch reversed, going for e4. Hmm. Okay, let's play knight c3. Maybe we'll push for e5. That remains to be seen. He's going to take and maybe knight d4. Yeah, this also happened yesterday, and I commented that maybe they can play knight g4, as Critter is doing. Okay, so h3 probably, kick that piece back, and then maybe e5. Any reason to do anything else? Mm, probably not. Let's just do it. So my rook is looking odd on the d2 square, but I have rebuffed his attacks, and I'm pushing his knight around as well. I wish I could hop my bishop out to e3 and then double up the rooks. That would be ideal. I'm curious about where this knight will go, though. If I had to guess, I would say probably h5. He seems like an active player, so he might want to play knight h5 and put pressure on g3 and f2. But he has gone into the tank now. He does play knight h5. Suspicion confirmed. Okay, I want to play g4, but obviously that hangs this pawn. So let's just play rook d1. Looking to play g4 next. He might have to play g6 or maybe f5. Something along those lines. He does opt for that. So let's kick him. And hmm, knight e4 is also tempting. Let's go knight e4. Might focus more on f6 and d6 with that move. And give a check. Does it do much? Hmm. Let's play this first. Take our time and just connect the rooks. Although, with the queen on e1, I can get my queen over to h4 quite quickly, I must say. So, that's always tempting. I'm going to do it now and see if he takes. I think he probably will take. And then play his knight to e8, either after a trade of rooks or without a trade. Wow, he does not take. Okay, this is really asking for knight g5. Knight g5 might be, like, crushing. First, I'm going to do this, though. So if he takes with the queen, knight g5, and I'm on f7 and h7. So he may have to play knight takes d8. Even though he would love to take with the queen instead. Put pressure on f6. But if knight takes d8, queen h4, maybe. And then I'm hitting h7, I'm threatening mate. That also looks pretty fatal. Yeah. So when white plays queen e1 way back on move 7, this is one of the virtues of this setup. Okay, knight g5 now. Just get every piece working towards the king. I couldn't take twice there because he was pinning me, but with knight g5 I throw a piece in the way so his bishop is not working towards my queen anymore. Although granted, if I take here next move, he might have knight f5. He's hitting my queen and my bishop. That may still be good for me, but maybe I want to go bishop e4 first. Let's do this, just to complete the picture. Control the f5 square. I feel like I can even chase his bishop next move. It's kind of a cool position. Ah, you know what also might have been good there is knight to e4, trying to go queen g5. But I'm going to chase his bishop. I'm going to play king f2 next, and he's trying to use his bishop to help support h5. Yeah, this will be a problem for him. This bishop just gets trapped, actually. He can't even play queen d7 because of knight takes. So his queen can't come anywhere in support. Hmm. Okay, so let's do this. He's going to take a2. Big deal. Okay, let's take that. Opening up lines towards the king. 
if knight f5, bishop takes f5. If he checks on the back rank, we could always play our bishop back to c1. My bishop is not even really participating in the attack. This should just get mated in a couple moves, shouldn't it? He wants to play... Uh, he wants to play knight takes h5, but he should just be getting mated here. Check, king here, check, here. I can take with check. And something like knight e4. Also just taking right away is really good. He's got a couple checks, but that's about it. Yeah, let's just do this. Like, if he checks d5, I can just play king to c1 even is good, I think, here. He has queen h1. I block with the bishop. He runs out. Just taking a couple extra seconds to confirm that. There's too much stuff hanging. If he moves the knight, queen h7 followed by mate. This is going to be mate in a couple as well. Take here and checkmate on e7. Okay, so the attack succeeded there, just as it did in many of those bullet games that I played. Uh, actually, if you're interested in the Leningrad or uh, the Birds opening f4 on move 1, you might want to check out that bullet tournament I played yesterday, because I'm not an expert in those lines by any means, but I played a bunch of games that were thematic for this opening. And it's an attacker's delight, this one going queen e1 and then e4, and then oftentimes your pieces are just nicely positioned to attack on the king side, as you saw here. Knight g5. I think maybe what I should have done instead of bishop e4, although I suspect white's position is dominating even here, maybe I should have played knight g to e4, looking to slide the queen in. Queen g5, queen h6. With knight g e4, I'd be reinforcing uh, this knight, and I don't really see how he prevents that maneuver. Yeah, he's pretty helpless. His king can't escape if my knight is standing on f6. His queen never did anything. He gave a couple of useless checks. So, fun game right there. Okay, let's play one or two more. I wanted to check out the best list, so let's do that. Kid Chess 17 Hey man, what's up? I have one question. The rating of ICC decrease or still normal? I don't know what that question means. <laughs> I don't know if he's asking about comparisons between sites or just my rating. I'll send him a reply later, but let's check out the best list for three minute. We have Daniel Naroditsky on 2587. That's a pretty nice rating. Jungle B just behind. Yeah, the top four guys, five guys are all Grandmasters. Templar Assassin. I don't know who this, this player is. Shamil Arslanov. I'm less familiar with the three-minute pool compared to some other pools. I feel like 2,400 is a really respectable rating in this pool. I usually hang around on the low 2,300s while I'm doing commentary and stuff. I wonder if I could get to 2,400. That should be my goal for this pool. So I'll give it a, a shot. Who else is up here? I think Jungle Bee is a anonymous GM. Yep. Darnock is Conrad Holt. Dalmatinak. Ivan Saric, that guy's really good. Very strong Croatian player. I wrote an article about Saric for this publication, Chess Informant. And that was, um, I think, after he won the White A B section and therefore qualified for the A section. Fun player to watch. So he's in the mix as well of the top three-minute players. Reviser, another familiar name that I don't remember. Karot Yelev, mm hmm. Yeah, played him before. Hmm. Absinthe, TGA, 1984. The mysterious Lufos, the untitled player who always has high ratings. Okay, and we've got T Rex. Hmm. Let's play F5 again. Maybe I've found my new opening. The Leningrad Dutch. I have a student who is coincidentally also named John who swears by the Leningrad Dutch. So John, if you're watching this, I, I know you're pretty happy about my recent play. <laughs> okay, so he's looking for some bishop h6 idea, stopping me from going bishop h6 as well. I can respect that, but I'm going to go rook e8. So if he plays bishop h6, I can keep my bishop and go bishop h8. I want to be able to play bishop e6 pretty comfortably, so let's do that. I guess he can go knight d5 if he wants. Uh, I might just take it and play knight e7, something along those lines. 
Actually, that looks pretty acceptable. Otherwise, it is kind of hard to break the pin, so let's do that. Try to attack d5 twice. e4, I can take here. He has to take on f6 now, because this just loses this pawn, does it not? I think it does. Knight takes e5, I take g5, so even though this knight is undefended, I don't see any tactic he has to exploit that fact. So we are going up a pawn. My bishop is a, a bit buried here. And I want to make sure he can't get a piece into e6. That would not be pleasant if he did. So how to handle this? Okay, so I could play knight f6, but he's going to go knight g5 most likely. I could go knight c5, but then he plays b4. Knight a6. My knight is kind of out of play. Hmm. Maybe my last move was a mistake. Maybe I should have taken with the rook and kept c7 better defended. You know what? I'm going to do this because if b4, he weakens this diagonal. So that's the, the principle I'm going to operate on. I wonder if b4, knight d7, queen takes c7, run into e4. He has rook a e1, though, then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm making a practical decision to play for an endgame. If queen takes here, I might play knight b6. But again, I should I should strive to keep a piece out of this square. So I, sh I shouldn't just flippantly play like that. E4, E4, he always has rook A, E1. That's the, the downside of this. Okay, I'm going to go here. I know he can take B7, but I'm hoping I can get some decent play. Maybe rook E, B8 then? Attacking the queen, attacking B4? Problem is I burned a lot of time figuring that out, and I had to give my pawn back as well. Let's go here and attack d5. Still threatening e4. Knight d2 is probably the right move there. He doesn't play it, though. Okay, let's just do this. Bring a piece towards the middle. Ah, bishop h3. Hello. Hmm. Ugh, this is gross. <laughs> Not liking my position at all right here. This is really disgusting, and I have to play fast, too. Okay, let's get out of the way so bishop e6 doesn't kill us at least. I'm having to get all my pieces out of the way. And he's just improving his pieces tremendously with every move. I'm going to try to go b5 and support that knight at least. Go here. Maybe b5 from him is decent. This piece is just dominate mine at the moment. Let's get ready for this. Going to have to play fast as well. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go here and maybe try for g5. This is a really sketchy plan, but I don't know what else to do. I even might lose the d6 pawn, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, knight takes d6 coming, but I, I just I had to do something. Couldn't figure out what to do. Brings that over. Okay, he's threatening h5. Let's keep that in mind. Let's go here. Well, at least now if knight takes d6, maybe knight d2 is an answer. There's no bishop f7 because my rook does cover that square. Uh, let's bring this over. Maybe h4 soon? Ah, I just blundered bishop f5. Ugh. <laughs> this is really bad. This is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, I couldn't even take because he was going to play something to f7. Here I'm just down a piece. I should probably resign, but I'll play another move or two. Rook h1 looks simple. Yeah, let's resign. That was a, <laughs> a shameful game. I feel embarrassed about that one. So we went from being up a pawn to suddenly looking at having to give the pawn back. That was almost a perfect storm of occurrences. Although, I, I think I did it to myself, mainly. I mean, he probably has some compensation here, truth be told, because my e6 square is vulnerable. And I never got a handle on that square. This whole giving up the c7 pawn plan was probably not good to begin with, but what do I do then? Because if knight f6, he has knight g5. I felt like with his knight coming into e6, then or even bishop h3 to e6, I was in for some pain. But maybe I just have to agree to that and suffer a little bit to hold the pawn, because... What I did was far worse. 
allowing this. And once he's able to maneuver this knight to e4, this is just a strategic win for white. I am so passive, and his knight plus his bishop dominate the play to such an extent, the game is lost here. And it's very easy for white, too. I mean, he didn't even have to take any risks whatsoever from here. He played some good moves, don't get me wrong. h4, uh, expanding on the queen side, but I have no play on the light squares at all here. So I'm, I'm stuck on the dark squares, and even on the dark squares, I don't have very good play. So probably, yeah, I think I have to improve my play either right here, maybe take with the rook, consider that, or here playing knight f6 and just let a piece come to e6, not try to overreact to that. Okay, let's play one more game. I'm at 2299. I played one game with birds opening and one with the Dutch. <laughs> let's try to end this with a win. That one hurt my rating. I lost 27 rating points in that game to T-Rex from Canada. <laughs> I wonder also if I could have responded to Queen C1 better because I've actually played this position before. I think I had a game where my opponent played Rook B1. This is via a different order of moves. I think it came from the English C4, E5, which we transposed to out of this. So I think my opponent played rook b1, and then I went h6, idea to stop knight g5. He played b4, and then I played bishop e6. And then he went b5, I went knight e7, and we proceeded from there. So queen c1, on the other hand, is kind of a, a sneaky attempt to control the h6 square, stop me from playing pawn h6. Sometimes you can consider f4 as a pawn sacrifice, probably not appropriate here. You would just take it, knight h5, take e5. Rook e8, I kind of like this idea, though. You can often play this way if you want to keep your fee and bishop. Rook e8 is prophylaxis against bishop h6, so we can just drop it back and not lose the exchange. And then he played that move, but now the g5 square is occupied, so we can safely develop a bishop here without worry of knight g5. Knight d5, take, take, knight e7, and you saw what happened. Okay, we play Macron 2 for the third time, and for the third time we're black. Should we try a different opening this time? Okay, why not? <laughs> we'll play e5. So I know he plays the uh, Roy Lopez quite successfully from the black side, so I'm kind of wondering what he'll do in this game. Maybe I'll play a Zaitsev variation. I haven't played one of those for a while in my videos. So that's, Zaitsev is bishop b7 here on move number 9. And after d4, you go rook e8, and you try to play bishop f8 thereafter. Reinforcing the center. So let's do this. He plays the bishop to c2. I think the move is g6 now, if I recall. So giving the bishop access to g7. Let's go bishop g7. And he's just content to maneuver. Uh, should I have taken and then played knight b4? Maybe I missed my opportunity to do that. That might have been the way to go. Still, though, this is probably okay. Okay, I'm going to play h6. Just ruling out any bishop g5 business. He plays a3, interesting. Okay, queen d7 maybe? Let's do that. Looking for rook d8. He might go b4 or just b3. All right, he's content to play it slowly. And now he's going to do this. Let's play here. Probably with an eye towards playing c6. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I'm going to go c6 anyways. See if we can force some trades. But he's probably not going to take. He's going to keep his structure nice and locked up. See, here I could think about sacrificing on d5 if I want. That would be really interesting. Well, let's take once and see what happens. Takes with that pawn. I could just occupy the file. But I can also think about taking on d5. You know, it's a blitz game. I'm going to do it. This this sometimes crops up in the Zaitsev. So sacking and then trying to expand with your pawns. So I'm threatening knight c3. He can cover that with a move like bishop there. Oh, did he just miss this? This is looking pretty strong. I think he might have flat out missed knight c3. But he should have played bishop d2 or bishop b2 to cover. Okay, so take the rook. Yeah, let's not mess around with anything else. Now I can look forward to pushing him in the center too. 
He has two minor pieces for the Rook, but I've got two strong center pawns that are going to cause him some problems. Can I take here and even save that piece? I guess he's going to go knight d5 is his argument. Yeah, let's just do this. Now e4, how about e4? Yeah, let's push him. Try to get these babies rolling. I don't want these pawns to get blockaded. No, sir. Okay, so f5. Let's go f5. Protecting this so I can later go d4, potentially. Let's take with the queen. Queen wasn't needed on b7, I don't think. He's going to try to slow us down. Let's get our king off of this diagonal. No tactics on e4. I don't want his queen making an appearance there. Maybe he'll go rook c1. Let's just push this. He's going to plop his knight into c5. I honestly don't even think I care about the a6 pawn, so I'm just going to let him have it if he wants. But he does not want it for now. Hmm. Okay, queen d4 maybe. Let's go here. Maybe looking for f4 ideas later. I know I'm kind of allowing my... Uh, a6 pawn to flap in the wind, but could be okay. Yeah, thing is now h5 is really annoying. I'm going to go here, though. Just protecting f5, so if h5 I can push g5. It's kind of a fragile position, and I'm way down on the clock, aren't I? So we got to hurry in that department. Knight there, okay. Let's go a5. He's going to play his knight to e3 most likely. I'm going to double my rooks if he does. Like I said, got to hustle due to the clock. Okay, let's go here. Maybe looking for rook a1. Potential idea. One of us is lagging. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Still got to watch h5 at virtually any moment. But I think the rook coming into a1, ah, he has knight b3 if I do that. Like, king g2 might not be a bad move for him here. Although he might want to stay off that square. He's going to play that move. Okay, well, can't I go here? I'm not sure about that one. Ah, you sneaky dog. But that doesn't work. I can just take here. <laughs> okay, now we can take here. Next move. Uh, take check. Okay, let's just bring this all the way back. He might go h5 and kind of weaken my king a little bit, but that's all right for now, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. I know b5 is hanging, but I'm trying to do something. Blech. <laughs> Just trying to defend this pawn. This is so passive, I know. This is going to be a weird time scramble where both of us are possibly lagging. Or mainly him is lagging. He is lagging. Can't really tell. Uh, he's definitely lagging. He has no time left. Okay, I won on time. Hmm. I don't like to win like that, but yeah, he clearly had some internet issues right there at the end. This board is now freaking out. So that sacrifice I did on d5 is intriguing. I have a feeling it's not sound, but it's not the first time in the history of ICC that someone has made an unsound sacrifice in the three-minute pool. So the point is, you, you uh, destroy this bind that white has you under with the pawns on e4 and d5. And you free your pieces. Here I'm threatening knight c3, and I'm really trying to get my f, e, and d pawns rolling. And with bishop e4, I'm pretty sure he just blundered into knight c3, but he could have played bishop d2 or bishop 2b2, whereupon I would have played f5 and tried to expand with e4. I have a feeling if bishop b2, though, I don't have enough compensation. Those pawns look intimidating, but I think if white maneuvers properly, he should be able to tame them. Well, since that game ended kind of lamely, let's play one last game. 
Ooh, practice 007. Okay, so this guy has given me trouble before. Let's play in English, C4. I think this is the player who beat me in that Larson, Nimzo Larson attack game. So let's go knight f3. Maybe d4. Yeah, let's push d4. He can go e4 in reply, and then we'll go knight g5. Let's see if he pushes us with h6. He's not going to, so I'll play h4. Just so if h6, I can always sneak the knight back to h3 comfortably. Maybe d5 here. Yeah, before he gets a chance to play d5 himself. Now knight e6 becomes a possibility. It's castle. He wants to castle as well. So I want to bring this bishop out, but if bishop f4, knight h5 looks to be his idea. So bishop e3 maybe. Hmm. Hmm. f3 also comes to mind. Let's go f3. I'll just try to take out this pawn in the center. I suspect he's going to take it with his pawn. I do weaken this quite a bit though, don't I? In playing this way. Maybe I should take with the bishop if he takes... Hmm, he's going to go knight h5. Queen e1. King h2, probably better. Ugh, he's got f4 coming, though. I do not like the look of this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. What did I get myself into? Okay, we're playing queen e1. Bishop there. At least now I can close it. Yeah, let's play f4. Attack his bishop. And maybe king here. I'm not sure I should... I think I should leave this bishop a little bit open at least. Knight b5 maybe. Mm. So this piece is terrible right now. <laughs> Utterly terrible. Let's go here. Try to go b3, bishop b2, perhaps, or knight b5, bishop d2, bishop c3, something along those lines. He wants the g4 square now. Okay, so I'm going to let him get in here. And then maybe trade off that, that knight. So we're going to go here and look to swap it. Lock position. I feel like he might be able to push g5 at some stage. Okay, I think I need to counterattack, so let's play this move. He can go knight h5 and attack this pawn, but I always have king h2, I guess, as a reply. Let's bring this back. Maneuver for the d4 square. If knight h5, king h2, most likely. Let's come here. This guy's very quick, too, is, his, is the other problem I have. Just hard to deal with on the clock, right? Okay, queen d2. So he's entrenching this knight in on c5. And maybe he'll go for g5 as well. I don't think he's completely ruled that out. Okay, let's go here just to put pressure on f5. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that he's played that move, I'm going to try to bring my bishop back to f1 potentially to guard c4. Wish I could find some job for this piece, because this piece is pretty bad, isn't it? Okay, let's go here, just so he can't go knight a5. Strategically, I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, I can try to play knight d1 to c3 and get the knight into b5. I don't think I want to play knight b5 prematurely, because he can take with his bishop and move his knight right back to that square. But if I can play it like this, that would be my plan. I'm somewhat concerned about my dark squares if I do that, though. Dark squares around my king, that is. Okay, now he's taking a lot of time. Let's play this move first. Just cover g4 a bit better. Give myself the option of bishop takes g4 at all times. Okay, let's take this way. Bring our king up a little bit. Maybe go for h5. We'll shift gears. Could be a time scramble. Very possible. 
Let's bring this back. I'm going to try to get on that long diagonal. Queen d4 ideas coming up. Okay, let's push here. This could get interesting. Try to get at h5, basically. We're pushing for the win against practice. Okay, let's do this. Let's go here. So rook here is one plan I have, rook g5. Give a check. And now his king is pretty open. Um, I'm going to go here so that if we trade, then f5 becomes weak. Hard to defend, at least for him. Okay, take that for sure. Let's give a check there. Take that one, give a check here. And then we're going to push this pawn. Ah, no, he can do that. Ah, boy. Oh, now he's got to worry about mate. Oh, we get rook f6 mate. <laughs> lucky, lucky us. But actually, is that act in fact lucky? Because maybe I just win his pawn. Rook f6 mate is the threat here. And I'm threatening king takes d2 as well. So he might have just blundered into that. If he had played his king back somewhere, king f7, I would have been busted. I realized too late that actually taking on d3 and then pushing e4 gave him check followed by d2. Because if he were to play d2 right away, well, that's fine. I can play king e2 and slide in front of the pawn. But I overlooked the check and then d2. And somehow was able to weave a mating net <laughs> just in time. I guess he could knight the pawn here. He could promote to a knight with check and thereby avoid mate. Okay, I'm happy to get that victory right as our session expired. So let's tabulate the results. And this game, by the way, was, I think, not looking good for me in the opening. I'm not sure about this d4 knight g5 plan. I've had this work out sometimes, but as you saw, it produced a tangled position where I think if I have to go f3 and weaken g3, I'm certainly not better. He might have missed some chances on the king side. So let's tabulate the results of this session. So we started against Kuru Mania. So I had one, two, three, four, five wins and what? Three losses? Five and three. Lost to Macron 2 in that Scandinavian game where he crushed us. Lost to El Rodor because of that tragic back rank. Queen A1 check. <laughs> Queen H1. Flagged Macron 2 in a game where I should have been winning much easier. Played a nice game against Critter. That was probably my, my smoothest game of the session. Very bad game against T-Rex. This game, who knows what was happening. Connection issues. Okay, so all in all, a normal ICC three-minute session. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Let me know what your weekend plans are if you want to in the comments. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you guys later. Bye.